Guys, I don't think I'm going to be able to watch this movie because I don't have any candles with me. And after that really, really lame joke, welcome back to the channel. Today we are checking out 16 Candles, another John Hughes film. I watched The Breakfast Club on my channel a while ago, now a few months ago, I'd say. And I really, really enjoyed it. So I'm really excited to get into 16 Candles. I feel like I've seen the start of this movie before. If I will let you know during this reaction if I've seen the start of this movie before because I feel like I saw the start of this movie with my mom and then when I was really young and then she turned it off because like something happens there's like some nudity at the start of the movie or something like that but yeah I'm not sure if I've seen it or if I'm just thinking of a completely different movie but for some reason that memory I've associated with 16 candles so I'll let you know if this movie is the one from my memory and before we get into this reaction let me do the lighting so let me turn on the light and we decide what color it should be Boop. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, so I don't really know what the color is going to be today. And you know what? This doesn't usually happen on the channel, but I'm going to go pink. That means that I think two videos in a row were going pink lighting today. But I think the pink lighting helps, you know, birthday parties, sweet 16. I don't know why. I just feel like I'm going to, I'm associating pink with this movie. And if you'd like to check out more of my reactions, you can head over to my Patreon with uncut reactions to many of the movies I watch on YouTube, as well as early access reactions to my movies that come out one week early. Thank you so much if you check it out. Now let's Let's get back to the video. Okay, let's get into this. I have no candles with me, but I'm hoping to watch some magical sweet 16th birthday. So, without further ado, I hope you enjoy my reaction to 16 candles. Watch the lane that's coming off of the uh, eastbound uh, Thorndale Avenue entrance. John Hughes, John Hughes, John Hughes. I, I really like his movies. They're so simple, yet beautiful. That's totally me in the morning. Oh, I got classes again. Get a break. You know my method. I don't hit her when you're just down the hall. Pick on someone your own size. <laughs> you shouldn't have left the bathroom. I'm getting married. Not until tomorrow. Come on, I got a mouthful of toothpaste. Let him spit. Let him spit. Hey, it's what's her face from the Breakfast Club. Hopeless. Why is the 16th birthday so big? I guess like sweet 16th. Why isn't it like sweet 15th or sweet 17th? Why why 16th? Where's my briefcase? Where'd you leave it? Don't be a smart ass. Hey, I'll be a dumbass. <laughs> I love this kid. Damn, love me, Brenda. Hey, birth defect! You missed breakfast again. It's her birthday. It's her birthday. Guys, wish her a happy birthday. Club. Oh, and you better learn their names as of tomorrow, their family. That's a lovely thought. Mm. When it comes your turn to get... Dang it, her birthday's being overshadowed by this wedding. Oh, that would feel so bad. Now, don't give me that pouty look of yours. You can eat your carrots when you get home. She's like, are you seriously forgetting? They fucking forgot my birthday. It's like Home Alone, but with birthdays. You know, because they forgot the kid at home, Kevin at home, and they forgot Molly's birthday. Ah, oh, the good old locker conundrum. I the amount of times I messed up that combo was crazy. John Cusack's in this movie. No, come on, come on. That is a very strange way to hold hands. I will not lie. I'm glad the journey is finally- Oh man, so sad still though. Please tell me no, none of you wore those glasses. Like, actually wore those. Please, please, please. What type of note is this? Who passed that note to her? Total idiot on the board. That's funny. You don't have to make this so obvious. You don't have to look at the person. You can just not do that. Don't do this. Don't do this to yourself. Oh man, is this gonna get shown to everyone? Oh no. Oh no, he's gonna pick it up. Oh, this is not good. I'm supposed to do it and pass it to you in independent study. 
totally screwed. Did you put your name on it? No, but Jake literally saw you throw it on the floor. God, I hope whoever got the note doesn't know it was me who wrote it. I'd shit twice and die. Oh, you're gonna have to do that. You're gonna have to do that. I'm being serious, okay? She looks at me like she's in love with me. <laughs> <laughs> I like that they're just standing. <laughs> oh, Jake, you talk like you're hard up. You got Carolyn. Now she's a woman. Da! This is the moment. This is the moment that my mom turned off the movie. This is the movie. I was not going crazy. Oh, that's that's hell. That is actually a living hell. Who is this kid in the background of the eyebrows? Shave off his eyebrows. I can tell you right now, nothing. You quit feeling sorry for yourself, it's bad for your complexion. <laughs> oh my god. Who is this Darth Vader? Is this gonna be the other Breakfast Club guy? Hey, it is the other Breakfast Club guy. I love this man so much. You know, things, life, whatnot. He thinks he's so cool. So you going to New Faces Dance tonight, or? That's also none of your business. Why did you do that? Oh my god, you have to leave. You know, I'm getting input here that I'm reading is relatively hostile. I mean, it's just... You think relatively hostile? <laughs> That's not the question. Am I turning you on? What kind of weird question is this? You Boy, you gotta get out of here. Why is the the Twilight Zone theme playing? You mean to tell me you didn't pack them? Oh, not again, Howard. Oh no. Oh no, she's seeing like the relatives or something that she doesn't want to see. Oh, no. Hi. Hi. Oh my god, I love this man already. Well, I haven't seen you guys in a while. Do I look any older today? Oh, no. No, does everyone forget? Oh, I bet they haven't forgotten. I bet there's like a surprise party at the end of his movie or something, you know? Like a after the dance type situation. Well, I'm I'm not not I hope they haven't forgotten. But even if there was a surprise party, why would you just say happy birthday? So my theory is just gone already. Oh, so see you a little later, darling. We've got a lot. <laughs> She's doing a really good job. I swear to God, this has got to be a joke. <laughs> and parents forgetting a birthday. Live for that shit. <laughs> That's so true. She's doing a really good job at playing a teenager, you know? Fred, she's gotten her boobies. Oh. <laughs> why would you say that? That, why would you say that? And they are so perky. No. Oh my god, why was she going in for the touch? What the heck is going on in this household? What's happening, hot stuff? Who is this man? His name is Long Duck Dong. What? What's with the gong? The club for dinner with the rice checks. Riz checks. Oh, Riz checks. How do you still not know their last names? Sofa City, sweetheart. She's on this sofa. So that sucks. I mean, I've had men who've loved me before, but. Not for six months in a row. Wow, that's a long time. Sam, I really don't have time for this. <sighs> no one's listening to her, what the heck? Unbelievable. You make someone a bridesmaid and they shit all over you. <laughs> what is with the gong whenever this man appears? Seriously, I would like to know. How do you spell? Well, you don't spell it, son. You eat it. <laughs> I'm gonna jump out the window, that joke was so bad. I have a wonderful idea. Would you like to go to the dance with Sam? <gasps> yes, do it, do it. I'm the DJ at the top, look at his fist go. Oh, 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 oh. Look at the man with the glasses in the background, the weird glasses man. He's just staring at the other girl. Maybe they're gonna dance later. Literally dance with the glasses man. He is both the worst dressed and the coolest man there. It's the one dude. Scope it out. She doesn't look like a freshman. Sophomore dude. So There's John Cusack. What the heck? How is he here? She is so zoned out right now. 
Oh, and he sees Sam. They lock eyes from across the gym. Yeah, yeah, you are. The guy with the glasses in the background again was dancing like this. <laughs> He's my favorite character. Yeah, I'll bet you a dozen floppy disks. You don't even get ten. You got a bet, scumbag. I love listening to computer nerds from back in the whatever this was made, the '80s floppy disk. What the heck, man? Girls underpants. Yeah, they had. Yeah, there we go. He was just gonna get his own underpants. <laughs> I love this man, but he's also so weird. No, no, no. It's okay with my dad. She's going home with me. The confidence on that man is outstanding. And go away. Shakespeare, I hope you do it. How's it going? How do you think it's going? This lady is crying. <laughs> Shoot. Get the hell out of here. Oh. I don't know, I just... It's just... That was rough. I'm really sorry about what happened in the gym. I, I had no idea you couldn't dance. <laughs> it's just the man who can't dance. You say it's your birthday. You can stop. Hey, June. Why is he doing this? Why is he so weird? Would you feel better if you knew one of my secrets? Or... Don't gross me out. No, we're not talking. I'm interested about the secret. This information cannot leave this room, okay? It would devastate my reputation as a dude. You have no reputation already. I've never bagged a babe. Okay, you're like four. Hey, what the hey. heck are you doing? Is gorilla mad over here? I'm probably zoning in on my brainwaves or something. Well, not really. I felt it on my leg. Oh my god. That's not my bullshit. I care about it, really. I mean, I know I came on kind of like a poozer on the bus tonight. Kinda? You like Jake? Jake? Jake's my boy! I just talked to Jake in the gym. Oh my days. He actually did though, I guess, so this is not a lie. Or no, maybe I should let him come to me. This is not my department, huh? But what if I decide to let him come to me and then he forgets? Or then what if he changes his mind? This is literally me every day. <laughs> About just simple things. Just overthinking everything. This is so strange, but I think I will. Oh, you're the best. He's gonna remember that for the rest of time. But this is before I knew as a person. I can get proof without actually getting physical. How? Underwear. Can I borrow your underpants for 10 minutes? Is he gonna see the underpants? Is he- Oh, man. Imagine. Fantasize that I'm your wife and we're like the richest, most popular adults in town. Lady, he does not love you anymore. I can name 20 guys who would kill to love me. Is that a threat? That's- Back, Jake. That's scary, man. Come on, before we get in a big wicked fight, let's get out of here. I understand her concern, but then when she said that, I was like, ooh, that's like, weird to say, you know? I love your shirt. I wanna say, don't say any of those, just say hi. <laughs> no, she, she got scared, I understand your pain. I can't believe I gave my panties to a geek. Oh, you did it! Oh my god. Props to you for doing that, though. He's gonna be a legend in his community. Again. The glasses, man, again. Literally the coolest guy in this movie. It's like the holy grail. Personal loans and politics. Are they playing... I think it oh. sounds like the Godfather. Just can't touch, right? <laughs> oh, sense <Really>? of <laughs> Are you sure you love this man? Here for five hours and he's got somebody. I live here my whole life and I'm like a disease. 
There was someone pining after you though. You can't deny that. Jay. Jay. This is everybody. Thank you for the introduction. I thought she said she wasn't going to invite anyone. Literally the whole country is in this house. Oh, look at them jam, look at them jam. Be polite to his parents, all right? No, you don't have to ring the doorbell. I thought they could have just walked in. Or did they have to ring the doorbell, I guess? Six. Did they just figure that out? Or did he, they hear, eat me? No! You can't knock over the beer wall. They're gonna fight you. Oh, me neither. <laughs> Let me check the phone out the window. Leave me alone. Oh my god, that would hurt so much. I feel kind of bad for her. <laughs> Trace, you guys, I'm serious. Come on, I need help. Okay. Oh, her hair's in the door. Oh no. Yes, hello, sir. Um, are you the little bugger that's been calling up here all night and then hanging up? <laughs> yep, that's me. He wants to leave a message for Sam. Here, give me that phone. Yes, leave the message. To be awakened by filthy suggestions from a foul-mouthed hooligan like you, and it's for our. Has it really been that foul mouth? That was great. Sam's lucky she has us, Howard. <laughs> yeah, really, she really is. Okay, close your eyes. Oh no, are they gonna cut her hair with scissors? Oh no, 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 no. Oh god. Oh god. Jake is gonna die. Wah! Scary horror movies. That would actually be terrifying. That would actually be terrifying. I feel like a real jerk, honey. We forgot your birthday. Oh, thank you. Thank you. No, no, I just get the feeling that something's bothering you. Something other than your birthday. No, I'm fine. <laughs> Someone says they're fine, they're not fine. We're all upset that Ginny's marrying a bohunk. No, it's not. Nope, you got it wrong. You were so close to having it right, but you got it wrong. Here, and he's beautiful and perfect. I like him a real lot, and he doesn't like me, okay? Yeah, he does. What are you talking about? Yeah, he does. He smiled at you. He looked and smiled. Seeing you all the beautiful and wonderful things that I see. Then he's got the problem. That was such a sweet thing to say. That's why they call them crushes. Oh, oh. If they were easy, oh. they call them something else. Oh, what the heck? That's a killer line. Oh, one more thing, sweetheart. When you do find the right guy, don't let him boss you around. Yeah. Dude, the underpants, really the underpants. She forgot <laughs> about them. How did you get them? Sound effects actually on point in this movie. Also, dad, the best. What happens to me if I dick you? <laughs> I'll kick your ass. There you go, there's no winning. I'm just not interested anymore. Does that really matter, guy? Yeah, it matters. Of course it matters. Somebody I can love is gonna love me back. Is that psycho? Think about the big picture right now. His high school mentality is over. Positive. He's pretty strong, actually, fireman carrying someone like that. This is uh, your car, Jake? No, this is my dad's car. You said you couldn't drive a stink. Oh, no. It's a Rolls Royce, Jake. Don't crash, don't crash. Of course, of course, he just... Boom! Now he cannot stop looking. Where are you? I'm here. <laughs> Why are you being so confusing? Is your dad a big man or? About 6'4. Very nice. 
No, no, wrong way, wrong way, wrong way, wrong way. <laughs> oh, the heck is still here. Oh, sexy girlfriend. Oh my god, no way, he's still here. Pretty nice of them to drop them off, actually. Now we're both on the pill. <laughs> <laughs> Never trust someone putting a pill in your mouth. It makes it okay to be really super careless. <laughs> no, not the car. Oh. Oh. This is getting good. Oh, <laughs> why? <laughs> I love random fourth wall breaks. <laughs> They're just so strange, but I love them. Cliff, do you have any film in your camera? What? Take those ridiculous things off! Now, what are they? Headphones? Like weird headphones? Because it's got kits. Well, what makes them different than regular kits? They got four. <laughs> All female extraterrestrials have four. That makes that makes sense, you know, logically. Can I have a little photo shoot with the car and her? That's a Rolls Royce. Ted, that's a prom queen. You got two girls in one night. <laughs> Wait a minute, you know, black and white. It would just capture the moment so nicely. When, oh. oh. You take it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, victory. Cheers. Oh my god. How do you suck so bad? Oh, boy. Mike, honey, go get dressed. I can't believe it, Jenny's it's not wedding in the day. It's wedding day. Break up with him. It's your nose. He's gonna walk out. <laughs> I'll just wait till I hear from you then. What? Oh my god, throwing off a cigarette smoke over everything. Oh, no, thank you. I'll recover. It's important to you. Birthdays are so important to kids and teenagers. It's crazy. They're like monumental achievements. I know my brother counts the days once his birthday is over. He just starts counting the days again till his next one. It was yesterday. We all forgot. <laughs> Classic. That's totally a brother response. <laughs> How are they all getting in the car here? There's one, two, three, there's five seats and like six people. Oh, there's a middle front seat as well. Oh, genius. Grandpa is talking to you. <laughs> you cannot reason with this man at the moment. <laughs> Why, you little scuzzbag. Oh my god, what the heck? She literally just kicked him with the... Oh my god. Not the Bentley. How did he get that thing on his mouth? What the heck is happening? Oh, does he have to sleep in that? Maybe? Did, did I do that to your hair? At this point, anything is possible. Oh, that's so sad. Hmm. You know, I have this weird feeling I did. Oh. Come on. She's like drunk on the meds, the muscle relaxers. The door. You beat up my face! You grabbed my nuts. That's actually a fair reason then. Married? Married. Married? Yeah, married. Married? Married. <laughs> you know the wedding is not gonna last, the marriage is not gonna last when all of this is happening. Well, too late. Love the teapot. <laughs> oh, this is so hard to watch. This is a disaster. Me either. You were pretty crazy. I was? Are they gonna get together? Like being close shave? No. Waking up in your arms. Whoa! Jake! Holy shit. Oh! It's 
stay here, okay? What if Jake starts beating him up? Jake should be happy. Jake's over her. I just don't know right now. But I'm covered, okay? I, I won't get hurt. That was a nice little conversation. Is the husband just supposed to be like this very unlikable person? Because even the smoking right now is making him unlikable to me. Um, well, excuse me. Um, everybody's waiting for me. I, I want to make sure I see my sister leave. Well, you've missed that. You've missed that opportunity. Ah, uh, there he is. My man, Jake. What are you doing here? I heard you were here. Oh! Can I call you later? Sure. I mean, no. Because I'll just hang out with you now. No, I mean, I'm not going to the reception. Oh, hey! Oh, the 16 candles and the title comes into play. Happy birthday, Samantha. Make a wish. Ah, me and Jake are on the same page. Look at the lean. Don't mess up the cake though with this lean. You better not mess up the cake. Hey. And that was my reaction to 16 Candles, the 1984 rom-com starring Michael Schofling, Molly Ringwald, Anthony Michael Hall, Havilan Morris, and John Cusack. I enjoyed that movie, but I don't think I liked it as much as The Breakfast Club. However, that being said, I still had a good time with this movie. I just wasn't as attached emo emotionally to the characters as I was in The Breakfast Club. It just felt like it lacked that kind of fi finality of emotions that The Breakfast Club had where they're all sitting in the circle and they're sharing their feelings and stuff like that. This movie never really had a moment like that. Obviously, it had the father and daughter moment, which I thought was very touching, but it never reached the emotional highs that I thought The Breakfast Club did. So I think I think I like this movie a little bit less, but that being said, I still really enjoyed this film. I still had a good time. The characters were really fun. Just what was happening was really cool. And I can imagine myself as like a 16 year old watching this movie and really enjoying it. I think it does relate quite well to teenagers, especially with teenagers making kind of little things or things that maybe seem less important as an adult. I know birthdays for me now are just every year they're getting less and less important. Like they're still fun to have and you still want people to wish you happy birthday, but they don't feel as gigantic as they did when I was a kid. I know I said this in my reaction as well, but my little brother, especially in the past few years when he was like 12, 13, 14, 15 years old, as soon as his birthday ended, he would start recounting the days to his next birthday like it was this big, almost climactic event in his life every year. And I think every kid, every teenager even can relate to that. You know, you're getting older, you're becoming more adult. You know, you, th you think your body's gonna change dramatically over the course of a night and you think you're gonna be even cooler when you wake up the next day. You think everyone's gonna love you. You want all that attention just for one day of the year. You know, you're, you're kind of the special person for that one day and you look forward to that. And I can totally understand that as, as I'm sure many, if not all children can. And I think the movie represented that really, really well. I also think it just represented teenagers fairly well as well in, in terms of just how the characters would react to certain situations obviously obviously I think they've gotten like just like every movie gone into more like stereotypes and stuff in terms of the jocks and the geeks and the, at least in my time in high school I don't know how it was in the 80s of course because I wasn't there but at least in my time in high school the divide between jocks and geeks is never as large as it is shown in movies like they do interact with each other jocks never just beat up on the on the on the geeks and stuff and even then their bullying is very timid compared to what they show in the movies so you know my version of high school my version of teenage life what I grew up in is very different than what this movie represented but it's still similar enough where I can see the characters 
being teenagers. I thought Molly Ringwald especially was basically a teenager. The way she reacted to her parents, the way that she reacted to her grandparents being there, like it's just so relatable. And I think the movie did a really good job making the movie relatable to teenagers. I think that's just something that John Hughes is very good at. Obviously there are things in the movie that are maybe wrong or maybe added for extra conflict and stuff like that, but I think all of his movies that I've seen so far have done a very good job at relating the age group that he wants to. Both The Breakfast Club and now Sixteen Candles have done a great job at, I think, representing the mindset of teenagers and just kind of portraying them on screen and usually movies do a very bad job at portraying teenagers on screen you know they're portrayed as super lazy or super arrogant or maybe even a mix of both there's never usually like a good portrayal of them on screen you know you always usually like hate the teenage character but in his movies there's a lot of depth to his characters and i think it does a lot to help just the teenage mindset i guess that goes around in hollywood you know how people perceive teen teenagers i think the movies do a good job at representing them so yeah yeah, I'm going to talk about the reviews of this movie, then I'm going to talk about not really the score, because I don't really remember the score or even really the soundtrack. The song in the final moments of the credits, those 16 Candles by the Stray Cats, I think they were called. I really like that song. I think I'm going to download it. It was very like smooth and I was just dancing to it during the credits, but I'll talk more about the actual sound effects because there's some really fun sound effects in this movie. Then, I don't know, I think I'm just going to talk about the very simplistic camera work and stuff like that, and I don't really know what else I'm going to talk about. Maybe Maybe something will just pop up in my brain. I'll talk a little bit about the cast as well. And yeah, that should be the review. So reviews for this movie, 7 out of 10 on IMDb, which is the audience scores, and 81% on Rotten Tomatoes, which is critics. So it seems like critics actually like this movie a little bit more than audiences. And you know, I, I think 7 out of 10, I think the audiences have kind of nailed this one in the head. I think that is a perfect score for this movie. I think this movie it doesn't reach the heights of The Breakfast Club, which is more of like an 8 out of 10 even 8.59 out of 10 in my books and I think this one is still a very enjoyable movie so I think 7 out of 10 is a good score for it. I think if you watch this as more of a modern day audience with kind of a modern look if you didn't like me for example and you didn't watch this as a child and you don't have the nostalgia for any of John Hughes movies I think you're going to be a little bit more critical to this movie especially because there are things in this movie that are like super super just stereotypical not to like just teenagers in general but to like actual like Chinese people for instance with Long Duck Dong like his character is like just this very stereotypical almost Chinese person and they kind of refer, refer to him in terms that can be considered a little bit racist nowadays so obviously this movie made in the 80s you have to keep that in mind but if you're watching this with like a new eye I think you're going to be a little bit more critical on this movie which is maybe why it is a lot less or about 10% less than the critics but I still think that a 7 out of 10 is a good score and I think it's it's kind of the score that this movie deserves sounds weird deserves like this is the score that the movie deserves now it's just like I think it's a good score for the movie okay yeah so the sound effects of this movie were actually really good first of all the gong was really funny in the movie for <laughs> for some reason it was just like the most random thing they couldn't they didn't need to add that but they added the gong in so many instances they and I thought it was just like long duck dongs like gong like whenever something would happen to him they would just play the gong and it was it was funny but then I think it happened once and he wasn't in the scene and I was like interesting but it was just I thought it was just a really funny sound effect especially because his name was long duck dong and a gong would play you know and gong kind of rhymes with his name as well I just I just kind of like that it was kind of like this joke within the joke even though it might have not meant to have been the joke in the first place and the gong might have just been there because he was from China or something I don't really know but I really enjoyed the gong sound effect because I could and every time the gong would go I'd go it's a gong for long duck dong you know <laughs> in my head I would kind of say that and it would make me laugh and make me chuckle a little bit there are also just some other great sound effects like people would kind of do something or a scene would transition and then sound effects would pop up like when the scene transitions and the geek and the very popular lady wake up in the Bentley and the music is like Boom, boom, boom. like it's super dramatic it's almost like a, the imperial march dramaticness and like super low deep notes and stuff like that i don't know just some really good sound cues i guess in this movie it almost reminded me of stage plays especially like if you haven't seen this i bet none of you watching this have seen this but the spongebob squarepants the musical the broadway musical of spongebob squarepants the sound effects in that play that broadway play if you're interested check it out are amazing the way that characters will walk across screen and then there will be sound effects at some 
guy has in the background that is timed perfectly on beat with every step of a person or every movement of a person and it's very entertaining to watch and that's what this movie kind of reminded me of almost like a Broadway play in that sense where a character would do something a character would move a character would move his hand or move his head or a scene would transition and there would be this really cool almost wha random wacky sound effect to accompany it and I really enjoyed it. It added some, like, a lot of life, I guess, to the movie. And I think, honestly, it's one of the things I enjoyed most about the film because it was just so random and I was just looking forward to the next weird sound effect. Okay, yeah, so the camera work in this movie is kind of the same as Breakfast Club and it's something that I actually really admire about John Hughes is that his camera work, he's able to tell such a compelling story or at least compelling stories. I'm sure this movie is very compelling to people, to other people. I found this movie fun, but not as compelling as The Breakfast Club, but he's able to tell these stories with very simple camera work. You know, there's not really any tracking shots or any rack focus shots. The camera is usually very stable, sat in place, usually kind of a wide shot or the close-ups when necessary and stuff like that. And he just kind of lets the action happen on camera. The camera doesn't really do any storytelling in his movies, which is very interesting because a lot of the times directors like to use the camera to tell the stories. And I really like camera movement and stuff like that. But you have to appreciate just the simpleness of John Hughes' camera, and yet his movies are still managing to tell these very compelling stories that I'm sure hit with a lot of people. And so it kind of goes to show that you don't need crazy Hollywood AAA camera work to make a good movie or to have a good story. You can have very simple camera work of just a wide shot, cameras on a tripod, just standing there, characters interacting, then cut to a close-up, again, not even handheld, just like on a tripod, close-up, you know, very simple shots that you can do at home, on your phone even, and you can still make a good movie, you know? So I think John Hughes is almost an inspiration in that regard because he just shows that simplicity doesn't mean bad because all the movies I've seen so far has had very simple camera work and they've all been great. Okay, so I'm gonna go into the cast now. I'm just gonna talk about Michael Schofling, Molly Ringwald, and Anthony Michael Hall. Everyone else in this movie was fun. John Cusack in this movie, it was just fun to see John Cusack, especially like a young John Cusack. It was unexpected. I saw his name in the credits. I was like, whoa, what the heck? This guy's in the movie. Everyone else in the movie also did a great job, but those were kind of like, these three that I'm gonna talk about were kind of like our main three, I guess. So I'll talk about Michael Schofling first because he kind of had the least to do in my opinion in this movie. I'm not gonna lie, I think the reason why the relationship or the love connection didn't really hit for me and in and the emotions in this movie didn't hit the same highs for me as they did in The Breakfast Club was because I kind of found his character a little boring. Like, I don't know, I just never really cared about his character and he was also mean to his girlfriend. Like, I know he had no feelings towards her or anything and you know, that's totally okay. But she was kind of like asking him, like, are you still in love with me? And then he would kind of like lie to her face the first time. And then when she was super drunk, he asked, she asked again, and he just was like, go away and slam the door in her face. And you know, it was actually Actually, like kind of mean and it happened over the course of a night for his girlfriend as well so it must have been very jarring for her for this to happen and of course everything kind of ends happily at the end and they have a nice kind of pretty mature conversation and she's probably going to date the geek but still I just it was just like he was kind of mean to her and and then I don't know I just found him very bland he never really did anything that made me interested in him or I don't know just made me see why Sam was in love with him in the first place besides him just being like a super hot guy so yeah I don't know I just found him very boring I thought he did good in the movie and his quest to find Samantha I thought was very funny I just never was super interested or invested in the character which I think is why I was never super emotionally attached to the relationship or to the wannabe relationship, if you will. Anthony Michael Hall as the geek, he is such a good actor. There is so much charisma on screen whenever he's on screen, whenever, whichever movie he's in, whether it's The Breakfast Club, whether it's this movie, whether it's another movie, he just adds so much energy and so much life to whatever role he has. And you know, he was he was kind of a he was kind of a weird person in this movie. He was a very strange person, but I found myself just like 
oddly wanting to see more of him because as he says i'm a gambler by nature i'm a gambling man by nature and you know i kind of wanted to see him gamble some more obviously he was making a huge fool of himself half the time and he was doing some really weird things like just like sniffing her and smelling and smelling samantha just kind of randomly like the first time they meet and stuff like very weird things probably like red flag material but he was still like very interesting because he was so weird and like quirky I don't like to use the word quirky but I guess he was a little quirky and yeah I just think he brought a lot of life to this movie I liked the friendship that he had with Samantha he kind of knew that he kind of lost the battle but then he kind of was the middleman in getting the relationship together with Jake and I enjoyed him I enjoyed him he was acting super smooth sometimes he was acting super scared and nerdy other times I was a it was a good little range for his character and I enjoyed him quite a bit and finally Molly Ringwald as Samantha Baker. I really enjoyed her character as well. Uh, I wasn't as like emotionally attached to her. I didn't think she was like the deepest person, but I could relate to her being super sad about both her boyfriend and then both Jake. I've both had problems with baby people not remembering my birthday who should be especially as a teenager it makes you go oh man this is so sad or something or you walk into school and it's your birthday and just no one cares no one even knows it's your birthday you're like oh this sucks so i could totally understand that and i could totally understand her issue with li liking someone and know and knowing or at least thinking that she knows that they don't like you back i've definitely had that problem before so like she was a very relatable character and i think a lot of teenagers especially can relate to her and to what she's going through which I think is why she makes her a good character and yeah I thought Molly Ringwald's acting as a teenager was great all of her mannerisms all of just the way that she presented herself really reminded me of a teenager and I thought she did a great job so yeah that is my reaction and review to 16 candles the 1984 rom-com thank you so much for watching and thank you so much to these wonderful beautiful amazing people right here for supporting me and supporting my channel it really does mean a lot if there are any other like good John Hughes films. I, he's probably made a lot of movies, but if there are any others that I potentially haven't seen, you can list them down below and maybe I'll add them to my list if I haven't seen them and give them a watch someday. So anyways, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time for my next movie reaction.